Hi, my name is Steve Appel from Work Comp Matters, and thanks for tuning in to this week's show. This week on the show, we talk about Lori Lachlan, who says, absolutely no deal, I will not settle. In addition, we're also talking about Attorney General Barr's uh, testimony before Congress and a Work Comp Central story, a Northern California neurosurgeon is arrested for fraud. All of this, in addition to other uh, topics that interest you employees, employers, and independent contractors. Now, here's the show. Stand by SOT1. Standing. 10 seconds. Ready, rolling. Ready, SOT1. Ready. In four, three, two, one, roll in. From the Roundtable at Legendary Uncle's Studios in beautiful Southern California, welcome to another edition of Work Comp Matters, the central location for you employees, you employers, and of course we haven't forgotten about you damn independent contractors. My name is Steve Appel and I'll be your host for the next hour with some talk news and hopefully some answers about Work Comp Matters. Thanks for being part of the show. And if you can break away from your Work Comp Matters, feel free to give us a call and clue us in with your questions, comments, and or concerns. The phone number worldwide, 818-357-4120. You can send me an email to wcexaminer at aol.com. You can send me a fax, 818-475-1437. With me in studio, the doctor, Michael Zima, Mark Reed, my protege, attorney Robert Ozeron. Scott Walton is on the board. Retired workers' comp attorney John Scalia back in New Munich, Germany, and back at Work Comp Central. Making sure the whole damn show goes right is Kristen Chavez. Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Work Comp Matters. We're brought to you by the WorkCompCentral.com. If you want the number one location for workers' compensation in both California as well as the United States, blogging, credits, uh, the education, the whole ball of wax. Check out WorkCompCentral.com. They've got a free, no obligation, seven-day pass. You can sign up for seven days, free, no obligation. And if you want to pick up their services, I have them. You should, too. It's only a dollar a day. And speaking of a dollar a day, if you want the number one computer management system used by more workers' compensation attorneys than any other system in the damn Kuiper Belt, give a call to 818-357-4120 for your no-strings-attached money-back guarantee one dollar a day a one law and last but not least we're brought to you by santa monica tickets if you want uh concert sports theater tickets front row sold out heck it don't matter give our buddy brian a call at santa monica tickets 310-395-8587 well this is a celebratory evening celebratory did i say that right mike correct thank you for two reasons one last week's show has gotten 1,200 hits, and I guess it's a combination of the uh, the talk as well as Joe Biden sniffing Eva Longoria's hair. Thank you to Joe Biden. Yeah, please. we got to thank a Joe Biden. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Eva Longor- Longoria. You were there, but also the second reason too. Uh, he's been here twice before. Um, he uh, has run for Congress for my district, the 30th uh, Congressional District, which is basically the San Fernando Valley. And uh, he's been here twice before. And at least for now, he is going to become a regular contributor to the round table. And I want to give a special shout out and a thank you to Mr. Mark Reed. Thank you. It's fantastic and to be Mark, here, Steve. You know, uh, uh, firstly, I got to tell you, 
uh, uh, full disclosure, uh, I know you are a common sense Republican. Uh, I, of course, am a rhino, a Republican in name only. Uh, Robert refuses to state. He will not state. And uh, Mike is basically a Reagan a, Democrat. A Reagan Democrat. But so everybody pigeonholes me. Everyone <laughs> thinks that I'm well, like either a neoconservative, as some people, people said. I don't know. Yeah. I got all sorts yeah. of labels set me. Well, let me kind of classify it. When you are a pragmatic Republican, you understand conservative fiscal responsibility of the government. But you are, how would you say, pragmatic in your decisions about public policy pertaining to uh, your personal choices? I mean, I, 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 I will fully admit that uh, that I am a conservative when it comes to uh, fiscal policy. But when it comes to social, uh, matters. social matters and responsibility, I don't want the government in my bedroom. OK, <laughs> I, I mean, I've said it plainly before. You know, I can have an orgy with farm animals and it's nobody's business but my own. No, and, that sounds illegal. I got to tell you. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, I gotta uh, tell you that we gotta draw. Statute. I just gotta say we gotta draw the line somewhere, right, guys? Yeah. I know I don't want to know what goes on in his bedroom, but we gotta yeah, draw yeah, the line. So, oh, so, no, no, you're right. I shouldn't have mentioned. <laughs> you shouldn't, you shouldn't talk about your wife and your yeah. girlfriends that way. Come on. Oh my gosh. Um, I think that issue came up last time. Yeah, it did. <laughs> In a circle right back around. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's right. That's why it's yeah. called the round table. It, exactly. it comes back around every day. Exactly. <laughs> but ending uh, circle. At least until further notice, uh, Mark Reed will be a regular at the round table. And uh, speaking of Work Comp Central, <laughs> bring it back around the table. <laughs> there is a story in Work Comp Central, uh, which, uh, as uh, Mike has aptly titled, uh, California Neurosurgeon Fraud Indictment. And this is from today's uh, Work Comp Central, and I want to read that story right now. Dr. Laura Anderson, a neurosurgeon from Carmichael, California, has been charged with multiple counts of medical insurance fraud, workers' compensation fraud, grand theft, after allegedly submitting over 500000 in fraudulent medical services reimbursement claims to the state compensation insurance fund. Now, there's another paragraph to this, but... My question is, if if uh, she's being charged with half a million to work uh, to stay comp, how much has she billed other carriers? I think Probably this might just be that. the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. I think it's pretty common knowledge, Steve, that most doctors, uh, unscrupulous doctors, not all doctors, unscrupulous, unscrupulous doctors, doctors, not, doctors, not doctors. all of them, have the ability of committing massive fraud because the insurance companies are only pushing paperwork. That's all they're doing is pushing paperwork and paying the bills. So an unscrupulous doctor could submit bills and they'll never be caught. But this is where we need a better uh, oversight or review board of these doctors of what are they doing. Because even in the state of California, I believe it was with Social Security, the Medi-Cal, there was more uh, wheelchairs uh, given to patients than there were people needing wheelchairs in the state of California. They were, they were administering more Depends diapers that you could literally go through 12 diapers a day for each patient that was getting them. So you're saying it's the Board of Medical Quality Assurance's responsibility to clean that up? It is, it, and also to heavily prosecute doctors like this one to make it not an incentive. If you got busted for doing an insurance fraud and you had to spend 20 years of your life and you lost all your assets, that would be a strong message to every other doctor. In California, Don't the, do it. the ones that have been getting busted, except for those that, try, that stay in Lebanon, uh, <laughs> those... <laughs> okay, go on, go on. They get what's coming to them, right, Robert? Yeah, what, what I mean, they they've been prosecuting doctors recently, but... I think you're right. Doctors have a lot to lose, so it's really just a numbers game for them, not just a morality one. Hopefully, it's or they intersect. Uh, but for lawyers, I mean, we have the bar. Well, it's because of stories like this. this that insurance premiums for uh, a doctors' insurance malpractice is going up and up, and it makes it extremely hard for the honest doctors – uh, the good caring doctors uh, to earn a reasonable living. Well, are you talking about the micro caps? Because that's a different issue versus yeah. the. this is more along the lines of health insurance as well as workers' comp insurance. Billing, sometimes the doctors will, uh, how should I say this, package their bills I'm talking, or I'm talking bills about in insurance premiums it. for doctors' malpractice insurance going up, being a regular cost of business, and basically it forces them out of reasonable health care because they can't afford to uh, 
operate a reasonable business. Oh, you're saying they have other costs that uh, that have increased well, they, so much they, they have, have to try to rent, scam they, the insurance they have companies? Rent, they have telephones, well, they have employees, and they have high insurance policies. They're gotcha. running an entire business, but the malpractice insurance has now created a wedge in between the doctor and the patient because the doctor is no longer treating the patient. They're treating their insurance policy. So they're going to do everything possible that may not be necessary for that patient, but to make sure that their backside is covered for their insurance policy. I, I agree that the business of medicine is difficult, and we want to incentivize doctors. The business to, of medicine, yes. The business of medicine is difficult, and so is doing business with people who are in medicine. Uh, that's why you don't do business with doctors, they say. And this but, is, and and it's it's so wonderful that we have a watchdog like WorkCompCentral.com that is reporting on this. Doctor Anderson was arrested this past Monday and booked on these charges at the Sacramento County Jail. She was released on bail and is scheduled to appear in Sacramento County Superior Court on April 18th for arraignment. I I just want to say this, that, you know, you could pick any profession and you're always going to have a small profession of those, a small percentage of those that are trying to scam the system. But I think, I certainly hope that the majority of doctors uh, practice the regular oath that they take to do no harm. That, that, they didn't take that to the insurance company, just to the patient. Just, just, to, the just patient, to the patient, yeah. Just to the patient. They, they never talked about billing in that oath, I don't think. They but like I go. said earlier, I think the majority of doctors really do practice good medicine, but the overbearing weight of the business that they have to run besides practicing medicine is burdensome on them. The insurance company, the, the, the process of billing and everything else. They get else, burned out it, quicker. It, they get burned out very quickly. But I think overall, doctors are, are very good people. They're really trying to do their best for their patients. But they're taken away. That focus is taken away because of the insurance, because of running their, their, their office, because of all the things that they have to deal with besides medicine. Very, very excellent and good points. And now we're going to go from the local doctor being busted to feeling the burn. We've got a story that has to do with Senator Bernie Sanders and the drug companies feeling the burn. Well, we just announced the start of the show. He is a regular contributor now at the roundtable. And with the, the next news story of the night, Mr. Mark Reed. Vermont Senator and 2020 presidential candidate Bernie Sanders launched his updated Medicare for All plan this morning. Sanders' bill, which will be co-sponsored by four of his fellow presidential contenders, Senators Kamala Harris, Elizabeth Warren, Cory Booker, and Christian Gillibrand, would work to get rid of insurance companies and drug companies making billions of dollars in profits every single year. Okay, let's stop right there. What do you think about what Bernie is proposing, Mark? The insanity of these individuals is not addressing the cost of health care. So, in other words, you don't like the idea. I don't like the idea at all because they're not addressing the pharmaceutical companies and the overpricings of medications and the FDA's inability of processing new medication. In a, another story down the line here, we're talking about, it's a good one, it's talking about medical marijuana. I am a proponent for medical marijuana. Okay, because but the drug companies aren't because they have so many other drugs that they want to push on society. Well, the drug companies aren't selling marijuana. It's not one of their products. Exactly. But they worried about market share. They have billions of dollars to lose in the market share. So they don't. Absolutely. So these individuals, these, you know, Bernie Sanders and the rest of them are not addressing health care costs and the skyrocketing cost. What they're trying to do is say, okay, we're going to have a government run health care program that all of you can participate participate in and all of you are going to pay for it it doesn't address the driving factor well i think the attractiveness is that a lot of the a lot of the democrats and the liberals think they're not going to pay for it that it's going to be free it is what's attractive about it it is free it should concern everybody anytime they just say that the insurance companies and drug companies are making billions of dollars in profits are 
I'm sorry. Isn't this America? Aren't we want people I to be got, successful? I, I got news for is you. That, is that something you're supposed to hate people but for it, now, for well, building a great business? Except for except for work comp they're doing matters. Bad. This, I, I mean, I understand, but they're doing their business. Except yeah, for work comp them. matters, nothing in this world is free. But please, well, please no, continue he, with the story. Finish finish up the story. I don't understand. Yeah. Just because they've been successful, now we must hate them and try to take it away from them? Is that Bernie Sanders' platform? No, like the previous story, it's talking about fraud and abuse in overcompensation for services. And what we're dealing with right now is, yes, the insurance companies are overcharging, the pharmaceutical companies are overcharging because of government regulations. It's not, the, the health care in America- It's more is, than regulation. It's more than regulation. Well, this would, this would, would increase that. This I, would be a single- I, America, I have to America, agree with Robert. This um, would increase that. Yeah, Correct. America, oh, oh, America, okay, America is the number one, in, in now Israel, in- technological medical advancements because for sure. it's a for-profit industry. You're taking the words okay. right out of my mouth. You're yes. the, first bill, the first pill cost a billion dollars to make. The second exactly. pill cost three cents to make. Exactly. How could, if there's one program like Medicare, which has set fees and set reimbursement rates, correct? Yes. So how would you incentivize new technology if you're going to give somebody a flat fee? Robert, the, these new technologies are also funded by research and development by the government. Correct. Okay, the schools that are producing these and the doctors that are producing these that are making the billions of dollars are being co-funded by research and development dollars from the taxpayer. So why oh. is the FDA in the middle making it near impossible to get new medications on the market where it almost cost a billion dollars to get a new medication on the market? Okay, well, those are compound because the FDA yes. runs one separate issue. They, they're looking for self, uh, safety and, and health, okay? Now, whether or not we have to subsidize uh, with government money, or there, thereafter is taxpayer money, really. Yes. There's no such thing as government money, just taxpayer money. If we have to subsidize private companies to push a certain direction because perhaps it's not profitable yet, but we want that direction to eventually be profitable, well, Mark, I read, agree with subsidies. Read the next paragraph. AIDS, AIDS medications, for example, it was a very uh, low... Uh, population of people who would have it, right? The total number. And it wouldn't be profitable to have uh, a company simply try to go uh, and find a, a pill for treatment of AIDS. You needed well, government funding. According to Sanders, the plan would provide free government-backed coverage to everyone in the United States and would basically put Blue Cross and Blue Shield out of business or something uh, like that. Okay. So if Sanders gets this approved, if we go on Medicaid for all, does it put Blue Cross and Blue Shield out of business? Essentially, yes. Essentially, yes. Well, so my understanding is it's just free health care, correct? Will, that's that's will, what he's selling. Will Blue Cross and well, Blue Shield ever, ever, and I mean ever, allow that to happen? No, they won't. <laughs> no, they won't. Neither will the pharmaceutical companies. You know, you, you, you have all to look at All the R&D labs. Or, or the R&D labs. They won't do it. You have to look at it in the pragmatic fashion. Wall Street connected okay. to them. Exactly. The pragmatic fashion is always follow the dollar, right? And the, the money interest involved will not allow it to happen. So people who vote for this, they're basically voting against their own interest, their own freedom. Anyone who votes for Sanders really just wants one overlord government to decide everything. Eventually. I just don't understand how the government could do anything right. Sorry. No. Well, they do, right. They, they screw Some up things. everything perfectly. <laughs> Mike, you've got the next news story. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just lighten it up just a little bit here. Yeah, and then well, we'll we go back to that. We didn't even talk about Senator uh, Sanders' platform. I mean, he's talking about reparations for black people. We didn't even discuss that. Well, Booker's the one that introduced yeah, that. Sanders, they, too. Yeah, hey, he's hey, riding hey, along. Hey, they hey. all are. We'll, we'll, Booker we'll is more about, interesting because what is he saying? That he's a victim? We'll, right? we'll it's tougher do, for him we'll to say We'll do it. a show on the presidential candidates later on, but wait, not wait, tonight. Wait, Mike, on, you've on got that, the news. On that quick one, being a part Native American, American Indian. You're entitled to reparations. I, too, I, no? We were here first. My, I, I, my ancestors are Jewish uh, through the Holocaust. Am I allowed to go back to Germany and just start demanding things? It's a silly proposal, but Mike, you're well, up. Well, I mean, just to lighten it up just a little bit. Uh, adios, Magic Johnson, and I'm sorry, guys, but don't let the door hit you oh, on the way no, out. No, he's not going anywhere. He's going down the street to Howard Hughes Center. Magic Johnson tweeted thank yous to Jeannie Buss, Rob Palenka, and Luke Walton after resigning last night from his two-year stint as president of basketball operations for the Lakers. Now, I don't know how much of a California state story this is, but here in Southern California, Magic Johnson has been an anchor for close to 40 years. He got in too deep. Um, 
Magic said his reason was he's not fit for the job and he no longer was having fun. Okay. I, I think what you were saying earlier is right. Uh, he was never there. He has never other in interests. He owns a huge portion of the Dodgers, and he probably thought he No, could... not anymore. He got rid of that to become president of basketball operations for the Lakers. He okay. sold that share. Right. But he, I assume he, he got probably, a share of the Lakers. He probably thought he could do the job by telephone and computer, and it is really almost a, like a... a major brick and mortar uh, you, position you know what i'm sorry but he was there two years and two months and he was an embarrassment to that position and he should have known better than to just thinking he can ride up on his steed and everything's going to go okay now there were other factors too uh lebron forget about it you know you see the the uber bling he had last night at the uh, at the game. Mike uh, says this to me today, and I go, I didn't know he was getting driven by Uber. And Mike gave me a, a new definition of Uber. Like I had never Uber heard. Mensch. Uber Mensch is Superman. So anyway, there were all kinds of other factors too, but I I just thought that there was a certain level of BS. Okay, like resignation, police. My opinion on Magic Johnson, because I've met him several times, is that he has been one of the most positive icons for the black community in L.A. Absolutely. No question so, about so it. I, Absolutely. You know, disparaging him and him finally stepping down, maybe it took him a little too long to step down because it was more than what he needed. But I think at the same time, he has been such a positive Magic message. Magic has clearly he, he, been yes. given back to the community. Absolutely. And, more and I, more I than most. Magic. More than oh, Magic, absolutely. man. Yeah. You can't. can't. Yeah. Everyone I, loves I, Magic I, in I L.A. Love the, I love the guy. I mean, because just of that fact right there, he has lifted so many so many of the people in the black community up by the bootstraps. Everybody. And everyone. But, you know, you go through, uh, what, what is the area? It's, what's it called? Um, Crenshaw District. Crenshaw District. Yeah. You know, all through there, he's redeveloped all that. He has come Absolutely forward so no many times. About it. So to, to talk massively negative about him, it's difficult for me. But this, I, you know, I'm kind of glad hey, that he's, you know he's kind of passed yeah, the man. He brought LeBron this, over. He did his man. job. Look, yeah. this, this is a jobs show. Magic in his career has been exemplary. But for the two years for this job... I mean, we probably give him like a D minus or something. Yeah, that's like what that. I would give him. That's yes. okay. He bit yeah, off I, a I little more like than he gets you. Like a B minus. He got LeBron you, here. If, if he you did take, his job. It, uh, I think I could have gotten LeBron Do you here, remember but, when Lasorda? Uh, do you, <laughs> if you have the checkbook. That. You remember okay. when Lasorda was the, the was the GM of the Dodgers for about five and a half minutes? No, I he don't. He had no idea what he was doing. <laughs> um, my name is Steve Appel. You're dialed into Work Comp Matters. We're brought to you by the WorkCompCentral.com. If you want the number one location online uh, for uh, workers' compensation, blogging, education, credits, check out WorkCompCentral.com. They have a completely seven-day free offer, no obligation, then pick up their services. If you want, like I have them, you should too. It's only a dollar a day. We're also brought to you by A1 Law. If you want the number one computer management system, applicant attorneys, defense attorneys, uh, Give a call, 818-357-4120 for your no-strings-attached money-back guarantee. One dollar a day, A1 Law. We're going to take a short break and go all the way across the pond to the madman across the water, 45-year retired workers' compensation attorney, John Scalia. Hi, this is the madman across the water with the weekly report from Munich. I will begin, as usual, with my Trump takes feature. Thanks to Steve's useful and definitely good suggestion, this section will now be titled The Gift That Keeps On Giving. That is, Donald Trump keeps on giving to satir satirists or satirical writers such as myself. And he gives us a plethora of material. It never ends. This week is no exception. Trump always complains about the fact that too many poor people are trying to get into America from countries he doesn't like, namely in Central America. So he decided the way to stop the flow of poor people was to cut off, cut off foreign aid to their governments. Hmm, yeah, that sounds like the approach an economics genius would take to the problem. Secondly, Trump is tweeting against dead people. He bashed Barbara Bush last week. Yes, Barbara Bush is dead. She can't fight back. He also likes to tweet against John McCain, who is also dead. Why would you say a president would tweet against dead people? Well, he's a bully. And bullies like picking on people who can't fight back, and who can fight back less than dead people. That's why historians enjoy being historians. 
We frequently comment about people who can't fight back because they're gone. In other words, he's being a typical bully, which of course brings up the question to the first escort, Melania, how's your anti-bullying campaign doing? Now, last week I promised I would talk about things that were happening on this side of the pond, namely Brexit. And yes, Brexit is still happening. Brexit reminds me of an old Disney movie called The Never-Ending Story. But it's a tragic comedy, and it's got interesting, interesting plot, interesting characters. To begin with, England was supposed to leave the European Union on March 29th. If you've checked your calendar, you notice that March 29th has come and gone, and England is still in the European Union. Hmm. Well, they were given another deadline, April 12th. Well, April 12th hasn't yet come, but the British have made it clear they can't get out by April 12th. So, Theresa May, the Prime Minister, is going off to Brussels this coming week to ask for another extension on the withdrawal agreement, which will be interesting, and which I may comment on later. But right now I want to talk about two of the main personalities involved in this whole drama. On the conservative side is Theresa May, the Prime Minister of Britain, who negotiated the withdrawal agreement with Europe. On the liberal or socialist side is the Labour Party Prime Minister, Labour Party leader, Jeremy Corbyn. Neither of them play well with others. Let me tell you what I mean. Theresa May self-describes herself as stubborn. I believe that's a polite term for being bullheaded and refusing to do anything anybody else wants or see anything any other way than the way you see it. She'd prove that by negotiating a withdrawal agreement with Europe and then realize when she came back to England that she couldn't sell it to Parliament. That's because she never asked anybody in Parliament about it, and nor did she care. She's already had it rejected three times, and apparently she's going to go for a record fourth. Then there's Jeremy Corbyn. Jeremy Corbyn is a leader of the Labour Party, a self-described democratic socialist and described by his enemies in the Conservative Party as a Marxist. Jeremy Corbyn would not be the leader of the Labour Party if they picked their leader the same way the Conservatives do. The Conservatives pick their leader by a vote of the members of Parliament. In other words, the same way our guys in Congress pick, pick the leaders for whatever chair they're trying to fill. The Labour Party, on the other hand, picks its leader by popular vote. And Jeremy Corbyn won the popular vote overwhelmingly, but he would never be elected by the other Labour members of Parliament. So, and he has a history of not playing well with others. He barely graduated high school. He graduated with two E marks, which are the lowest, one, one level above an F, which are the lowest marks you can have and still graduate. And then after a sojourn doing other work, he came back and decided to go to college in London. And he quit because he disagreed with the faculty on the curriculum. Yeah. He does not play well with others. So you've got these two people, one of whom is bullheaded, and the other of whom obviously does not play well with others, having the fate of England in their hands and trying to hammer out a compromise that they can bring back to Parliament to get some sort of deal approved. They've been negotiating for a couple of days now, and what a surprise. No deal has emerged. No compromise has emerged. And it appears England still is in the European Union. It will be very interesting when Theresa May goes next week and asks for another extension because the Germans, who always believe in consensus and since World War II have apparently not wanted to fight anybody over anything, will agree with what the, the English are going along with or want. However, it's not clear the French are willing to grant an extension. So things will get even more interesting next week. Well, that's the view from this side of the pond this week. And John, as always, thank you very much. My name is Steve Appel. You're dialed into WorkCom Matters. We're brought to you by WorkCompCentral.com and A1 Law. We'll be right back after a short musical break. How does it feel to be one of the beautiful people? Now that you know who you are, what do you want to be? And have you traveled very far? Far as the eye can see Baby, you're a rich man Baby, you're a rich man too You keep all your money in a big brown bag Inside a zoo What a thing to do How does it feel to be one of the beautiful people? How often have you been there? Often enough to know when you were there Nothing that doesn't 
and the Cherry Blue Storms with Baby, You're a Rich Man. My name is Steve Appel. You're dialed into WorkCom Matters. We're brought to you by the, a, uh, pardon me, the WorkCompCentral.com. If you want the number one location for workers' compensation, both in California and around the United States, WorkCompCentral.com. They've got a completely free seven-day, no obligation. You can pick up their services for seven days. And then if you like them, it's a dollar a day. Get a subscription. I've got one. We're also brought to you by A1 Law for the number one workers' compensation program. Um, 818 4120 for A1 Law and Santa Monica tickets. 310 395 8587. Who wants to take the next news story? Robert, you're up. Sure. College admissions admission scandal update. In the weeks since Felicity Huffman and Lori Laughlin w- were named in the high-profile college admissions cheating scandal, they have been working with their legal teams to determine what their next move will be. This past Monday, Felicity Huffman agreed to plead guilty in the college admissions bribery scandal. Boy, was she smart. Yes. Okay, And as I've said before, I love her husband, William Macy. I really don't know Felicity Huffman, but I love William Macy. However, a lot of the characters he's done. Lori Laughlin and her husband, fashion designer J. Massimo Giannulli, are continuing to fight the charges. Well, the charges just got worse when yesterday Laughlin and company were each hit with money laundering charges and now face up to 40 years in prison. I think she made a huge mistake. What do you think, Mark? I think they absolutely did. I mean, realistically, they were given a sweetheart deal just to plead guilty and save the taxpayer a tremendous amount of money trying to prosecute them. So the ones that are throwing insult to injury, first of all, by bribing the institutions to get their children in, depriving other children of a seat in the well, Ivy League Well, that's an schools. interesting topic. Let's, let, let's talk about this for a moment. Okay, now I'm, I'm totally against paying or writing checks or whatever to public institutions if your kids don't have the grades but if you're a usc or yale or a harvard what's wrong and i'm not saying what they did was right but what's wrong with writing them a check for a million dollars and say i want my kid in because it was quid pro quo it was but what's wrong with that if it's a private university if it's a private university and they're giving a donation for the foundation of the actual school to help out scholarships of other children that's one thing okay but to not have a qualified child to be applying for that school to forge their sat test no i'm not talking about forgery i'm not talking about but this but this but this is what this was for they were they were giving they were giving the money money. laundering yeah they were giving money to the schools in order to get their unqualified child in there which is bouncing a qualified child out of that spot all right let's let's maybe maybe 
Robert, you went to USC. I did. You graduated from USC. Now, clearly, when it comes to... There's a lot of empty seats in those classrooms. Let me tell you. Okay. And when it comes to the sports, the football, the basketball, I, I don't... Yeah. Football and basketball. I went during the heyday of football, I mean, too. They, they have scholarships, and supposedly they're required to get a C average, but like you said, there's a lot of empty seats. Listen, there's a lot of impropriety, okay, on all sides, all different ways, for different motivations. So when you get caught, yeah, you're made an example of. But the fact is, next week, there'll probably be a sports scandal somewhere across the country at a different university. Or maybe mm-hmm. at USC again. Probably at USC again. My alma mater just keeps on hitting. But, uh, <laughs> we, you know, if it's going to be in the news, it might as well be us, we say. But, <laughs> yeah, but no, that's just how it works that's out That's an USC. optimistic way to look I'm at it. I'm a positive guy, as you know. Uh, Glass half full. But yes, there's impropriety everywhere. The, I don't know about buying... I don't think it matters, truthfully. I, at a private university. At a private university... Uh, yes, public university I think is more yeah, important. Well, I agree, it's a different uh, issue. But at the same time, you can't bribe anybody to make your kid not a dumbass. I'm sorry, it doesn't work that way. Just because they went to USC doesn't mean anything. Okay, they're still not going to do anything in life. They're just going to act even more entitled, and they're probably going to get less opportunities because they'll say, "But I went to USC," and they're going to act condescending, and it's going to be a turnoff. Well, it whoever lowers to. it lowers the quality of the diploma if they become one known per- for that. Okay, but that's one that's one degree we're talking about. One off. We have football players there. I mean, well, do you want to give them, you do you want to give them a reading comprehension test to see if they're really of the grade level that they say they are? I, I would disagree. Okay. I think a lot of the sports individuals now that are going to school understand one thing: that they got in there on a scholarship of of a sports scholarship. They know that if they don't get into the professional field, they're going to have to rely on their education. So a lot of them are going to business majors and so forth. You might be pulling out one person that is, you know, not at not USC. Real they qualified. all think they're going pro. Okay. Well, they have to. That's a positive mentality. I, I think I'm going to be a billionaire. Whether I hit billions, I, I don't know. But, but if th- you look at the majors that are selected by these students, majority, okay, we're talking about... Ab- yeah. You okay. guys know what we're talking about here. Come on, none of us were born yesterday, all right? Born at night, but not last night, as they say, right? Uh, Day before. Okay. We know where the real world works, okay? These students are taking classes where their professors will often give them a wink and a nod. Right when I was going there, and we were on a national championship. This is oh three for 04. what? For what? Football? Yeah. Oh, okay. Go this, is, this P- is Reggie Bush and was Pete that a Carroll. Carroll team? Oh, Reggie That's right. Bush. This oh, is yeah. Reggie Bush, Pete Carroll, Matt Liner. He, he, I, I was there at the heyday. Uh, he doesn't yeah. exist at USC anymore, right? Well, you know what? We had a good time nonetheless when he was there. They they took right? they down all, all of his pictures, us. trophies. You're right. They, but Correct. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Right. Yeah. But I saw, I was in uh, some of these classes with uh, some of these students. Okay. They would have a little guy uh, with a golf cart drive them to the class to make sure that they sh- checked in. And when they're in the class, what do you think they're doing? They're on the phone in the back. Okay. It's just how it works. I've never checked their grades, okay? But I went to class with a lot of athletes. It and, used to be worse. Yeah, but sure. I, and I heard that when I was there, all right? At least they're physically in the class, they said, right? They actually, that was the thing. And they would have a person who comes to the class. And you, I was, I was a freshman. I was wondering. And they would look, like, across these huge lecture halls and start pointing people out. And I said, what's that? They're, oh, they're making sure the athletes are here, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because they have to check off the box. But that's all they're doing is checking a box. So do you think the example that's being made out of these superstars right now is the fact that they're politically active going out talking against elitism and then in paying off things in the system? Yeah, is, oh, hypocrisy? The system, what do yeah, you know? The, the hypocrisy that's involved in these individuals and all of a sudden they get busted. Everybody, you know, it, Everybody's it's accusing like, somebody of some, something else is usually the person who's done it the first time. Yeah, well, it's like the senators that go out there and talk against you know sex and scandals and everything else and the next week they're involved in a sex scandal. The truth is we're all, we all operate by the same rule which is life is what you make out of it yourself. Okay? Absolutely. That's the Absolutely. rule. Now, if you go to USC and you get there on a scholarship, by the way, I was friends with a football player. I still am. And he was there for a scholarship, and he's a very bright guy, and he worked very hard. I don't know if I should drop names here, but it doesn't matter. Uh, he's a, a very, he was on the football team. He didn't go pro, but he was on the USC football team, and he's matter. my friend. Go ahead. Uh, so he worked very hard while, the, while he was there, and that's how we actually got to be friends, is that he told me, well, I know I had this opportunity, and I work really hard, and he was just a real humble, was humble guy. Was he a starter? No. 
But See, this, he, this is what I'm talking about. The, the average individual that goes there, it's not coming from an elitist family, has a different mentality. But we're talking about the big time schools here. We're uh, yeah. talking about starters at SC, UCLA, LSU, Al- Alabama lost their whole program for a whole decade, didn't they? Yeah, no, but they, that was but, SMU. No, that was Alabama too. No. Alabama lost their program uh, before Saban They call was it there. the death penalty. As far as I know, SMU is the only college team ever to get the death oh, penalty. Oh, the total death penalty of the destruction of the team, the ending of the uh, team. No, SMU is back after, Alabama t- after 10 years. Okay. Alabama was not out of the game for 10 years. I thought they couldn't give scholarships for a, a decade before Saban showed up. This was like in the 90s. Not that I've heard. So oh. this problem has been going on for a while, Robert, right? So yeah, what we have done, out of it. What we have done up to this point is created a whole class of new graduates graduating college with this elitist mentality that they stand above society, right? Versus the average individual going in there and wanting to have a humble, hardworking attitude and bring everybody else up. Especially, I played sports, and it's a team sport. If you have an individual in there that feels that they're better than anybody, that their stuff doesn't stink, they are more of a cancer to society than they are a help to society. So this is what this scandal has been breeding in, the, in society and the community as a whole, is if I've got the money, I can do whatever the hell I want to do. This is why we call it a two-tiered justice system anymore, with Jesse Smollett over there in Chicago, the same thing. I can pay my way in, and I can pay my way out. I'm sorry, there's too many people, the average individual, the 99% like Bernie Sanders talks about, that are being shoved down into the toilet because of this elitist mentality. I, 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 can't, accept, that, I can't accept it. There's nothing new about it, though. Yeah, there's, there's, absolutely, but it is so blatant now. We do want to see sometimes the uppity get their comeuppance. I mean, because we, it needs to be even application of the law, uh, up and down. And, and I think that's super important. I'm and if we having, lose that, I, we lose respect for the I'm law and the courts. I'm having an epiphany on work comp matters. <laughs> I never in my lifetime thought Mark Reed would be backing up Bernie Sanders. Okay. <laughs> well, in some respects, we all want the same things. Well, it's just how we want to go about it. I was going to mention this before. The stuff that Bernie Sanders talks about is very appealing to the millennials because the capitalism as we see it now is skewed. Okay, it's not true capitalism anymore because it's skewed to the ones who have the advantage, the ones who have the money. And this is the problem. When we're talking was it about. ever not I, that I humbly way? disagree. When was it you ever not disagree. that way? As a, as a, as a kid for uh, immigrant parents who came from nothing and now has one attorney and 10 employees. I humbly disagree. Well, you fought for it. You, you, you earned it. Right? Oh, yeah. Okay. And anyone can. What I'm talking about is the reason why kids go to Ivy League schools yeah. is not necessarily for the education. It's for the connections. For connections. Sure. Okay? Political. Of course. Political connections, of course. business connections, and everything else. They hang out with each other. This is what the school system has turned into. So the system is skewed. It doesn't mean that you can't pull up your own boots, pull up your pants, and go out and work hard. You still can make it. That's how I did it. I didn't go to college, Robert. Okay, I you bought- You probably dodged the debt bullet. I- the what, bullet, the uh, bullet of debt, all the student loans. You know. Well, I, I did. Are, I did dodge it because I went into business management. I was a. I was a, a night manager for Jack in the Box at 16 years old. It's okay, a so job, actually. it actually was, and I was, I, you know, I wasn't even legally qualified to work the night shift. But because I believed in hard work, and because you still could keep what you earned, and I was only making a dollar seventy-five an hour as a as a as a night and manager, I was, and I was making a dollar an hour sweeping up hair at the yes. back room in Encino on Ventura Boulevard by Louise. I was making a dollar an hour, like Monday through Friday, three and a half hours a week after and school. And I was working this, four days a week for boss here but this when is, I graduated this is, law school. But this, what, what Steve and I are talking about is what kids are missing out on today. And that is, is working hard, achieving and accomplishing something and feeling good about yourself, as you did, Robert. You, you know, you, you, you're an immigrant. You came here. You worked well, I'm hard. I'm not. I'm born here. You're well, my born, parents are, par- yeah. Your parents I'm are first here. generation Well, most of, us, most of us. In addition, immigrants. what I think is lost today and i am going to point to the millennials you know there's a statistic out there that no one is disputed that a majority of people would not be able to pay their bills and might be homeless if they got hit with a 400 dollars unexpected bill That's and right. what that means to me is that most people or that are included in this survey do not have at least four or five hundred dollars in their savings account to pay an unexpected bill. We've had bankruptcy attorneys on the show before who say the most common cause of bankruptcy, the most common cause of not paying your credit cards, 
is because of medical bills. My point being is that I think a lot of people today have lost the art of saving money, be it taking 10% of your paycheck, come hell or high water, and throwing that in the savings account. When I was sweeping up hair at 14 and a half years old, and I worked at gas stations and the bagel shop, and I was living at home, I banked 50% of my paycheck minimum. Now, of course, it's only 10%. I'm supporting myself. But the art of saving money is a lost fiscal responsibility. And I think that needs to be discussed more. You're, well, you're absolutely correct. I mean, I, as I mentioned, I was 16 years old when I became a night manager, but I lied my age to start working at Jack in the Box at 14 years old. When I got my first paycheck, I went to Bank of America and I handed the, the uh, cashier there the, my check. My, you know, and she's like, where did you get this? And I said, I earned it. She said, hold on a minute, because she could tell my age. It, wasn't, it was obvious to her I was a kid. The, the manager of the bank came over to me, and he goes, where'd you get this? And I said, I earned it. And he goes, how old are you? I said, I'm 14. He goes, thank you for not lying. He goes, I'll tell you what, this is what we're going to do. We're going to open up a savings account and a checking account for you. You're going to put 80% of your money into the savings, mm -hmm. and you're going to get 20% into your checking account, and I'm going to watch you. And that's exactly what he did. You're hitting it right on the nail that in school, in high school, they're not teaching fiscal responsibility Absolutely. of no some kind with right. our kids. So when they do hit college, what happens? All the banks show up and they give them credit cards. The next thing you know, they're they're you know, twenty thirty thousand dollars I do want to say though, and, and before is, and before is, you say, okay. let, me, let me let me say this. Here's my protege, Robert. You know, uh, he like he said, he worked for me six and a half years ago. I showed him the ropes. He's done the rest all his own for the past five years. If the money's not going into his savings, I know for a fact he's putting the money back in his business and he's growing his business. Yes, that's so in a, in a sense, his business is his it savings is. Well, account. My greatest asset is myself, right? Yes. Uh, when you rely on well, yourself, I, I, you rely I, on I, no I, one else. I would say, my boy, your greatest asset are those 10 employees that work for you, but go well, ahead. I think, yeah, they're the uh, my second greatest asset. Okay. okay. <laughs> First, I, I must thank the California Bar for giving me a license. I can't you know, look past that. But I do think it is harder nowadays. I just bought my first house, as H you know. Harder to save. I, harder overall, financially, to, to break through the shell. But you had to, to save money for that down payment. Okay, but I'm a lawyer who works nonstop. You didn't and when just, I mean you, nonstop, you didn't, I mean, ladies and gentlemen, nonstop. You, you didn't just like kill one case, get a high fee, and put a down payment on I've a house. I've declined two phone calls while we've been doing this recording from a client, okay? So I work nonstop. I work that way for six and a half, seven years, all day, every day, two jobs, first for my employer, and then I would pick up clients on my own and I'd just do my best as I could. And it, my business grew from there. And eventually my second business overcame my day job and I had to switch. There you and go. then I went there the full go. way, right? Uh, but, and I'm a lawyer and I passed the bar the first time without classes. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of exemplary things and I just got my first house at 33, okay? Back in the day, you used to be able to work in the factory at a butcher shop. Way back. And provide for your family, buy a nice house in the burbs. Your kid can go to school. There'd be an American dream there. I have worked extraordinarily hard. And I got to be honest, I don't expect people to work as hard as I do. I, I think it's I a do. bit. Most people yeah, don't. No, 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 no. I you, worked literally I till you injury. Ex you expect yourself to. I don't expect. I don't expect most anybody else. To. Exactly. I only, I would only, I wouldn't even expect people I love to work that hard. I injured myself working that hard okay many different ways uh just no need to talk about personal health issues but i have worked myself nearly to death uh because that's all i knew i didn't have a rich parents to help me out in fact i had no support and uh, i decided that i wanted your, to help your, others your parents uh, i'll tell you were the greatest example for you they were the and, best example and, and that's created, where they helped. And created your drive in you even though they may not have been as, as educated and successful but they left the country their country of origin they came here legally they gave you an example an but what I meant by support i meant financial yeah, support they gave you an unspoken trail Oh, no, follow. it was spoken. Yeah. They sometimes it yelled spoken. it, okay? <laughs> beat it into my... Yeah, no, I, I, beat, me, I, I, into I, I know his dad. I'm sure he yelled <laughs> it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Put it this way. Even after it's spoken and you've acknowledged that you've heard it, they'll tell you again, okay? <laughs> Until you finally just get sick of it. But So that trail is in, is in braille was, on your backside. Correct. 
<laughs> so the and you know what a lot of times when i was a little kid i'll be honest i deserve it but that's beside the point uh you know i wouldn't advocate that now even though i deserved it um you have to work very hard to break through financially in the current climate right yes. and i i have a set of skills that most other people don't have i invest in stocks uh, i i'm fluent in real estate because of my parents growing up and they would try their hustle as best they could and you know they would learn and they'd pass it on to their kids but when i talk to the kids that i went to school with they have no clue and it well now i see my success right Are they later in life every but that, but that's no a, of course not homeowners they're looking to make a rent that's a great word that you just use hustle if you go into any of the barrios, the ghettos, they talk about my hustle. I'm going to hustle. They're always out there hustling. I'm just an hustling. American hustler. Yeah. You know, I love this country. I do believe that there's opportunity for everyone in this country if you want to keep working. If you keep grinding and you don't give up and you become what you want to be, don't look for the results first and then I'll be that. No, be it first, the results will come. Success, okay? success is not luck. Anybody who wants to work hard, and I mean really hard, will succeed. Put it this period. way. I haven't even had my big one-off case yet, my big lucky case where you make a whole bunch of money and you ride off into this. I haven't done that. I built my business brick by brick. One small case at a time. So there's no, at the same time, there's no chance that my business uh, flounders overnight because I have such stability. Right. I built it from the, right. the bottom down. You built a solid up. foundation. Correct. So I think, you know, there's a reason for everything. We always say that, right? When you look retrospectively, you'll see the reason for everything. And if you don't, you got to keep looking because you're missing the lesson, right? Things happen for a reason. And, and the struggles are there for a reason for you to learn. If you, if you keep making a mistake and you feel frustrated, it means you haven't learned your lesson yet. All right? That's why the mistake keeps coming. You're trying to get a, a message from God, but you're not listening, whatever you want to call it. Amen all right? That. So, but we have to, first of all, and we can talk about God with children. And uh, not music. tonight. Thank that's you very much. Co- Please continue. That's a different conversation. Please continue. But, Please move on. But faith and success are intertwined, in my opinion, because you must believe in yourself. Well, I, I totally you agree believe, with that. Absolutely. You must believe that you have this destiny. That God has put you on this earth. You Stop know? saying God, please. I'm not even religious, but I'm spiritual, as you know. Okay. And you could I, say G-O-D. The, it's what, faith in yourself. You can, well, faith in a higher power. If, you just, if you're selfish, if you're motivated only for your own desires, I, I think that's a, a short-sighted way of operating. I'm not talking when, about that. I'm talking about you, know, you, you, you know, have a belief in oh, yourself a total that belief when in yourself you that work succeed. hard, you will succeed and be reasonably properly Steve, rewarded. Steve, I'm going to throw something at both of you because this is where, in the political arena, the Republican Party has completely lost the message. And that is, is you, Steve, for real quick, what does the word conservative mean to you? Uh, the word conservative, a Just lot, of, a lot of things in the political arena. What does conservative mean? Um, conservative, I would say, has a pejorative connotation. Uh, it means fiscally as well as socially conservative. Uh, uh, that means that uh, we want. I don't know. You, okay. you, you, you it's threw kind me, of a you, bad word. You it, threw it, me. It, is it, a bad, it, it has is a, a bad negative word. connotation, and Robert, you threw me Robert off. I'm sorry. Robert, being a lawyer, under, will understand this. Is the Declaration of Independence, our Constitution, our Bill of Rights, are founded on the conservative principles and values, which only means one thing, a very simple thing. There's a natural order to things. The natural order to things of, of generating wealth is Get your ass up in the morning, go to work. Do that every day. Be hard Get on there, yourself. Be but hard same time, on yourself but same time, and drive. Don't take things too serious. Don't take things too serious. But you constantly are, there's a natural order. There's a natural order to everything in your life. There the, is. The way to treat your, your business partners, the way to treat your employees, the way you treat your wife, the way you treat your husband, the way you treat your community. There's a natural order to things. And because the word conservative has been so bastardized by the media and by the political arena, people know no longer and have not been taught what is the natural order but see i think th- i think the term natural order of things has a pejorative meaning either it's all been as well so you think it I, means I, god I, no i think when you say natural order it refers to a strong class. dominating the weak it refers it refers to a class that is higher and better and than a lower in the class and people use that argument for but, segregation but, but hold on a minute you brought up robert you said something strong guiding the weak 
This country was built on the strong guiding the I weak. I would say it would and be the Areodites ordering the slaves. But that's where that natural order of the things of the strong, knowing that they have a responsibility to the weaker to take care of and to guide them, to bring them up. It's not the natural order to step on people. This is why this country is the most compassionate country on the face of the earth, we because we country. understand that principle. That you help the weak up. You help the ones that may be mentally challenged or physically challenged. You help them up. That is the one major aspect of leadership is either you're arrogant in leadership or you're humble. And if you're humble in leadership, then you understand the natural order to pull the people up with you. You don't push them down. Like they say, you're measured by what you can do for someone who can do nothing for you in return. Absolutely. Right. And if you can do that selflessly... You've you've already gained. You just don't see it, right? You gain invaluable things. To, you, you you put out there what you're gonna receive. I believe in that. I think they call that the secret, Mark. We've talked about that on yes. the show before. <laughs> that the, the universal energy that is kind of um, very familiar. Metaphysical. I'm very Mark and Robert very, bonding. Wow, well, this is getting weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen. Everybody wants anybody who's genuinely happy inside wants others to be successful. They don't want others to struggle. They don't get joy just because somebody fails. That means you're a loser. Right. If you want to drag other people down and see them fail, but, you should want them. But to be succeed, a lot of people in business think you have to step over everybody to get to the top. Sound oh, well, your, com- your competitors me, is no, a different story. Me, okay? no, no, no. Me, on the other hand, I want to help people help me. So in the process, I can also help them. And there's enough to go around, and everybody can make positive numbers from it. For sure. But they will help you when you help them and ask nothing in return because now they feel good about you and they want to help you. Picking up on that. But if somebody wants to hit you over the head with a bat every day and make you feel like a piece of dog done sitting on the sidewalk, you're going to look at them and say, screw you, I don't want to deal with you. I don't want anything to do with you. That's exactly how I built my business, Mark. I took a lot of cases when I was just a solo uh, that other attorneys didn't want. And the only reason I took them is because the person on the phone said I needed help. And I'm like, okay, fine. Yeah. You know, so if I'm not going to help you, I know there's no money in this and no one else will. And you know what happens? They refer you like 10, Absolutely. 12 people. Absolutely. And you go, oh my gosh, I never thought that this could be so good. And then that person refers you people and the web begins. In my business, I do the same thing. Somebody calls up and they, I know the areas in LA all the time. And I say, what is your budget? This is my normal price, but what is your budget? Because I want to help you and out. And what's your line? Yeah, I mean, what, what type of work do you do? What industry? I've had several companies. <laughs> but I have a company now that's pretty much almost, you know, I'm semi-retired, but the company when I was talking about this one is we had an animal company we brought out to educational programs, to uh, film work, print work, to private parties, private events. But a lot of times when the schools called up, it was in low income areas and they couldn't afford the 2000 bucks. So I said, what is your budget? Somewhere $500. And I said, okay, I'll do it for you. And it's because it gave those kids an opportunity to get something that wealthier kids at wealthier schools okay. got normally, right? right? So, yeah. But what Robert's talking about is basically everybody will call it karma. What you put Karma's out real. there, what you put out there in the world is what you receive back. So you have to keep that balance of positive versus negative. If you're the type of person that walks around and all you see is the negative in life, then that's all you're going to spew out of yourself. No question about it. Scott, what do we got? Three minutes left? I was yeah, going to say, okay, Mark, Robert, Robert, I was asking ahead, Mark's opinion, interested in Mark's opinion. What do you think the uh, general low morale of the next generation is, the financial low morale? There seems to be a lot of people who buy into Bernie uh, and that type of propaganda. Anything free against the rich people? That low morale. Where does that come from, that, that, that uh, animosity well, towards the successful? some of it comes it's, from fiscal mismanagement, as we were talking earlier. It's fiscal mismanagement, earlier, and it's also the, the new culture that's being taught in schools that when the kid, the kid's going to school and they're taught about socialism now, when they get out there and they try to put two nickels together and come out with 20 cents, right? It's too hard. And this is why Bernie is making major traction is because the free marketplace is skewed. It actually is. And it, Santa you know, Claus Sanders. You, you can't you can't get capital as easy as you used to. That's true. Right. I couldn't get a loan until by, after the time I didn't need it. it exactly. So 
this is where the free marketplace at this point, this is why people listen to uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. They listen to Bernie Sanders. Uh, we didn't even talk about her, yeah, her black uh, accent. That uh, was so embarrassing. Yeah, so this is why the kids are flocking to them right now, because they see it. They see the hypocrisy of all of our politicians. They're liars. OK, see, so they're 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 going towards them without understanding history. But Mark, Sanders hey, hey, knows better, right? He's just doing this for power. He personally he, he knows is, better. Yes, he said, you want to become rich, write a book and make it a best Yeah, and he felt and a little like, shame a about it, right? Yeah. He had to like uh, yeah. hide the fact that he's a millionaire. It, like, well, we didn't know. It, well, exactly. So I, these are kids voting against really, millionaires really for a millionaire? He, you really exactly. think he's not sincere? Sanders? Yeah. I, I think he believes it, which is even more dangerous. He knows the damage he could be doing uh, just hurting together you all see, these I, disenchanted I think kids. Bernie Sanders is one of the most uh, trustworthy, sincere politicians I've ever seen. Oh, yeah, he'll tell because you straight up he's going to ruin I, it all. I believe everything that Bernie Sanders says. I don't agree with it, but I believe when he says he's it, he's very I truly, sincere. He's very he's sincere. Very so sincere you, you, about what he's saying. I don't. You agree believe that with his him. he thinks that his economic policies will actually work. You think I, he believes that it will I work trust, for him because yes. he's going to be on the top, dictating to you yeah, what you're going to get. Yes, that makes sense. I mean, the so it system, works for him. Yeah, the does system work, in Russia with oligarchs. Okay, it works great for the oligarchs. My family left it. Okay. It came here. You know, we're not looking for a repeat. Let me tell you, anybody who wants to vote for Sanders, there's a few slots in Russia for my family. We left. There's open space there. Just go find a spot and, you know, just I was wherever you got. I was going back and forth, Robert, with an individual I considered a socialist on Facebook. And one I won't use one minute, name. you guys. Oh, got to love Facebook arguments. Yeah. We should just so post them. This, this little Facebook argument I got into, all of a sudden he said something was so relevant and actually expressed his real foundation of his thought. And that is, is if our generation doesn't understand that the capitalist system is skewed, that the generation that is graduating from colleges now with a socialist attitude and belief is going to throw capitalism out in the next 20 years. And that is a scary thought process. Well, because I, do we need to get that broke in order to fix the system? Hopefully we not. need to fix it. We do need more liquidity in the system. We want more opportunity, even though I think there's plenty if you actually work hard and look for it. Uh, there's That's just America overall. There's a lot of uh, turnover and a lot of opportunity in that turnover. Uh, but hopefully it doesn't get to the point where we're... You know, in food lines like Venezuela, I don't think it ever will. I, I don't think, we think know better. it's ever going to happen. We are 5% of the population of the world, and we run the globe, the and that is a Because fact. we have a strong economy, it and doesn't we were matter. buttoned it, down it, on that, but now we're that, hollowing ourselves out. It's been that way since World War II. I, generally, I think you help from strength, not from weakness. You don't help others by hollowing yourself. You can only help others by being strong, right? So... If you want to help across the border, for example, to Mexico, if you really care about, you know, those poor Mexicans, you're going to want a border. You're going to want something strong so they don't get assaulted on the way up. And then you're going to want to fix the economy so then you can go out and start to uh, do generous work and perhaps help them where they are. Uh, I know we all want the same things, but it seems like a lot of people want to destroy it all to get to a result that's never going to happen on that path. I think next week, Robert, we need to talk about the, the immigration issues in Central and South week. America and Mexico because that's a very interesting topic. And I have interviewed the mayor of, of, yes, of Mexico you have. Tijuana, and Tijuana. We can and we'll talk do it. about and that. And we will do that it. Sounds I interesting love it. For it's next going to be a good one. Mark, I got to thank you once again. Thank you so much for agreeing to come on, at least for now, to be a regular member of the roundtable, as Mike would say a part of the ball club. We will look forward to seeing you next week. Also, always showing up. He's the doctor. He's my chief of staff. It's because of him that I don't have to work my ass off 80 to 100 weeks, uh, hours a week like Robert. I can kick back and, and do this free weekly podcast. Oh, listen, I wish I was born to a rich family, okay? I'll throw that out there. It would have been much easier, but it wouldn't have made me the man I am today. I tell you what. Scott, for I'm Scott I'm, Walton. I'm glad I was born in the family. Legendary I was born in. Uncle same, Studios same. for a 45-year retired in uh, uh, attorney in Munich, Germany, John Scalia, and for all the fantastic people back at WorkCompCentral.com that continue to support and approve of this project, including, but not limited to, Kristen Chavez. My name is Steve Appel. We'll see you again next week for another edition of Work Comp Matters. Matters.